That last one was really made so you can see how rapidly we can update and actually get data from our users, right? I didn't actually even push this one to the database because, or to the live server because I don't want this. I don't actually want a Google form at all. So we're gonna convert that into our own form, which is gonna exist inside of our app itself. So it's gonna be based off of a model um, that we wanna use. So that means that I'm going to specify my own fields and then render my own form in here so it's not going to Google because I don't want it to go to Google. I want that data in my own database so I can use it for anything else, right? I can just play around with the code and do all sorts of things with it. But this right here is really good for just, hey, I've got something done, let me release it and put it out there so now I can collect information. That's the point of this idea landing. So we're creating this page to do that specifically. So now what I wanna do is actually have a way to get information from these users. So I'm gonna create a new app and I'm gonna start this app as, we're gonna call it newsletter. And inside a newsletter, we're gonna look at the models.py here and we're gonna create a new um, class in here called join and it's gonna be models.model and it's gonna take a few fields in here and the field is gonna be first off email, so models.email field and we're gonna just you know, leave it just like that. We're gonna put a timestamp, so we'll do models.date time field auto now add equals to true. This means that it's going to set this date time field to when this is created. And then we're gonna go ahead and, um, well, that's it. Let's go ahead and then do str and we're gonna return self.email. Um, this is for rendering in the admin if you're not familiar with that already. And also it's Unicode if you're using um, Python version two. Okay, so now that we've got this, let's go ahead and bring it into the admin by doing from.models import join and then admin.site.register join and register is lowercase. Now that we've got newsletter, let's go into our settings and let's add this in. So I'm gonna add in newsletter. Um, I'm also gonna make sure pages is in here too. So newsletter and pages, we wanna make sure those are on each settings file in our installed apps. Uh, notice local does have it, production, local and production both had it. So we saved that and we've got our first model. So I'm gonna go in to my terminal and just do python manage.py make migrations and then python manage.py migrate. And then we're gonna go ahead and run the server or excuse me, not the server, but the local web again. Okay, so now that we've got this model, let's go ahead and make a form for it by doing forms.py as a new file. So from Django import forms and then from dot models import join and then we'll do class join form and that's forms dot model form and then class meta model equals to join and then fields equals to email okay so we grab this join form and now this is going to go into our pages view so inside of our pages view we're going to bring this in here so from newsletter dot forms import join form. So now that we've got this, let's just use a different view or a different generic view and we're going to call it form view. Let's make sure, let's see if form view works and I'm going to just override this home view to take in form view and we'll just say template name equals to and this is going to be pages slash home dot html and then form class equals to join form. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and comment out the other view. We'll save that. I've got my local web still running, so let's go ahead and go there. I refresh in here, everything looks exactly the same. Um, so let's make sure it, by restarting it to make sure that it is actually working, and yes it is. Okay, so that means that in my template, I can now use that form. So inside of this template, I can get rid of this and just do form.asp save that, refresh in here, and there is my email field there showing up nice for us. So let's go ahead and do form method equals to post. Action, we can leave empty. We want our CSRF, CSRF 
token in here. That is um, a security measure right there. And then we'll do input type equals to submit and value equals to um, join. And then we'll just do a class of BTN and BTN default. And then we'll close off that form. We save there, refresh in here. Now I can actually join this, um, but I wanna make the form just slightly better. So I'll come back into the form and say email equals to forms.email field. And we'll just say label equals to an empty string. And then I'm gonna do attributes equals to, um, well, I wanna make sure that I have my placeholder in here. So before I actually jump into that, let's save this and just see that the email field is changed. So let's try that again by refreshing. Notice the email itself goes away. So what I want is I wanna make this a bootstrap field. And I also wanna change the attribute in here to being a actual input of a form. So we'll just say, well, there's a few different ways on how I could go about doing this. I'm gonna do it the easier way by coming in here and doing widget equals to forms.email input. And then we wanna put attributes equals to, and we'll do placeholder being your email. And then our class, we're gonna add form-control and that's it. And we save that and we go back into our project. Let's make sure we refresh the server here. And there we go. So now it's actually a bootstrap form and we can actually join our email in here, just no problem. And that input or that widget is what did it for us. So if we space this out a little bit, you can see a little bit better as to what's going on here is I added a custom class and I also added its own placeholder uh, for what the value would be by default. And all this did was override this email field. Um, so the other part is I'm gonna just write in some validation in the form itself, not in the model, but in the form itself, I'm gonna go ahead and do clean email and we'll just do self dot uh, self and then args and keyword args. And then I wanna get the email equals to self dot cleaned data dot get email. And I just wanna to check to make sure that the join does not exist. So we'll say join query set equals to join dot objects dot filter email I exact equals to email. If QS dot exists, we're just gonna raise forms dot validation error. This email already exists. Otherwise we'll return the email there we go. So the reason I did it here is because maybe in the future I wanna have, uh, I wanna allow this to not be unique. So I could add in the parameter of unique equaling to true if I actually wanted to change that, but I don't wanna change it. So I'm gonna leave it as is. Now I'm gonna go ahead and refresh in here. Let's make sure we refresh the server as well. We refresh and I'll just say abc at gmail.com and I'll hit join. Okay, so I don't have a success URL, so I need to add that. Good thing that that, that error came up. And it's also a good thing of why we did some testing. And I'm just gonna make it go back to the home page. So let's try that again. Uh, it's still giving me that issue, so I need to restart the server again or the local web. And I run it again, and there we go. So now if I did abc at gmail.com, I hit enter. It's, it's actually, there is an error for it. It's not actually, bringing it in correctly. So let's go back into our view, or excuse me, our forms. So this still should be actually cleaning the email field itself and running the error. So let's go ahead and print out that email. I just wanna make sure that this is working. So run local web and I'll do abc at gmail. I hit join, looking back into the terminal. It's not showing it here. So let's run the python manage.py run server. This is the Django server versus the Heroku one. And I need to add this to our allowed hosts. So going back in here, add that URL to our allowed hosts. Of course that URL is coming from here. And I refresh and I do ABC at Gmail again. I hit join and it is printing it out. Okay, good. So that means that it is working. So let's go back into our validation error. I'm gonna go ahead and print and say exists. 
We'll save this and it'll say ABC at one, two, three or at gmail.com. We hit submit and it's not actually saving it. Well, this is because of how our view is. So let's go back into our view. What's going on right here is we actually need to create a form valid method and this takes in self and form. So we basically want to save the data that's coming through this form class. Now I could do it this way or I could just take Instead of the form view, we can take create view and bring that in here, save that. Let's go ahead and restart the server, refresh, and we'll do abc at gmail.com, hit join, and then try it again, abc at gmail.com, hit enter, and now it's saying this email exists. So now it's actually working. Now the form view, what we could do is we could say in here, we would return super, and this is going to be home view, self, form valid, and form. So inside of here, we could say email equals to form.cleaneddata.get email. And then we could do other things with email. But by default, using the create view, it will handle all of that stuff for us and actually create an item in the database, which is something that's really cool. And then if we go into the admin here, and let's actually, I think I have it as learn code 2016. And so enough, it is there. I go to ABC and there it is, it's joined. Okay, great. So now that we've got that, let's do get status, get add, get commit. And then we'll say added newsletter app to collect emails. And then we'll do git push Heroku master and and Heroku run Python manage.py migrate because we have to run migrate so the database on the live server actually has the correct stuff. So I'm gonna let this run. Cool, cool, cool. So now after it ran migrate, this is what it should say. And since that's the case, let's go ahead and jump into our live server here. Um, we should see everything the same, right? Notice the URL here. And of course, if I went to um, knockhq.com and do the same thing. So I do abc at gmail again, hit join. Uh, it doesn't look like it did anything, so we'll do abc at gmail again, hit join, and now it says this email already exists. Okay, great. If we go into the admin, we can go to joins, and we see that, boom, there is our email address. This is much better, and it is now ready to collect data. Um, you're there. Like, this is something you can use, except, of course, you'd want to change some stuff, which is something we'll still do, um, but we are pretty much there and ready. There's a couple things that I definitely want to do before we move on, which one of them being we want to make sure our join form portion has um, some better message after it's actually completed. All right, so if you have any questions on what we did here, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.